Well, hey everybody! You didn't know you were going to see me in the reflection of my toaster. Well, I'm glad I got my clothes on. Anyway, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Don't go away, I'll be right back. I'm having coffee and toast! All right, let's just get on with it and get this toast going. Now, I know I'm not supposed to have my spoon in the coffee, but, uh, well, sometimes when you pour hot water in an old glass like this, you certainly want to make sure the glass isn't cold before you do, and it kind of helps to have the spoon in there. I'm drinking out of my English um, Jacobean Amber mug, and I'm waiting for a piece, to, piece of toast to jump out of this oven, our toaster. Now, while we're waiting, here is the quiz. Who designed this toaster? When was it made? And specifically, where and when was it exhibited? In other words, there's a story behind this toaster. And can you come up with it? Well, don't worry if you can't. I'll tell you in a video coming up soon, but it's a grand old toaster. I did a lot of work to get it back in good shape. And in any second now, that piece of cinnamon bread is going to be ready. Now, there's a wonderful function on this toaster that will allow it to either pop up or when it's finished, it will keep it down in there and keep the toast warm. It actually keeps it cooking for just a few more seconds while the coils cool down. And I think that's where I have it set at the keep it warm function. But this is one of those afternoon, there it is, you see it just popped, but I've got it set where it doesn't come up until I want it to. Okay, there it is. Anyway, as I was saying, this is one of those afternoons where it's sort of a little bit colder in the house than it is outside but it's not quite cold enough to turn on the heat just yet. So some hot buttered toast, and I got a lot of butter on this, don't I? And some coffee is gonna be really nice this afternoon. What's everybody doing today? It's Wednesday, October the 21st, and I'm back with another thrift haul, and it's gonna be a weird thrift haul. Nothing here really matches. But I'm um, cleaning out, you know, I'm just going through odds and ends and uh, putting some things up for sale. I'm eating off of a wonderful amber 1930s plate and using my Art Deco Green Bakelite knife. I'm listening to a little Ethel Merman this afternoon. There are 12 cuts on this CD and I have to admit, after about five cuts, You've probably had your fill of Ethel, and I like her, but I think I'm ready for some Penny Goodman. Anyway, let's see what's what. And we'll go over here to the wonderful things that are on the kitchen counter. Back there is a wonderful iron, late Victorian picture frame in really good condition. They do make reproductions of these. This is an original. One of the things that gives it away is the support on the back, you can see, and the way it's connected to the actual frame. Now there's no mark on this one, sometimes they're marked, oh, Jennings Brothers, made in Connecticut, and there are others, but this has nothing on the back except a number. The glass is missing, and the... Uh, three little arms there that would hold the glass in place are missing as well. But it's not broken. There's no damage. And it has a wonderful old painted finish. Sometimes these are actually gilded brass, which would be ormolu. This is just heavy cast iron or some type of heavy, heavy iron and some old, <laughs> probably gold paint. But it is an old surface. Might be the original. The nice thing is, no one has gotten 
an awful brand new can of gold spray paint and ruined it. The measurements are on the auction site, so if you're curious, you can look that up. Also, I believe to be in the original paint is this wonderful 1920s glass uh, or base, metal base boudoir lamp. And it has a funny top. Now, those of you who know your 1920s lamps know there's a special glass shade that sits over the top. This will unscrew. I'm going to do it with one hand. And uh, the glass shade will sit over the top on this. And then this cap holds it in place. So... Uh, I don't have the shade, but the lamp, I'm showing you this so that you know you can't just stick a, just a general lamp shade that would go on a traditional harp on the top of that. It dates to the 20s, I'll turn it off, in good shape. Anybody have the shade? I always buy these replacement cords because they're easy to throw online. I slap, oh, like eight bucks on it. And someone will be happy to get a uh, six foot long 16 gauge appliance cord there. These were for uh, sometimes coffee pots, but usually little uh, fryers and broilers and that kind of thing. Now, we always think of pink being something from the 1950s, and it certainly was popular in the 50s. But you know, pink has been around for a long time. Uh, you see a lot of pink in bathrooms in the 1920s and 30s, but it really enters the kitchen in the 50s. This is a nice one and I don't normally find them in pink. So if you're interested in one in pink, there it is in good shape and uh, working perfectly for your syrup. Shawnee didn't make that, but it was Stanford Ware. I think it was Shawnee who had that corn, corn on the cob line that was so popular or the corn ware line. But this is obviously a little cookie jar missing its lid and get creative use it as a planter or put kitchen utensils in it it was just too good to let it go a couple of tiny little really tight cracks around the top i see this a lot with pottery of this age they don't really affect this the uh, sturdiness of it they really almost seem to be more from age than they do from damage it's pretty stained on the inside and on the out. Someone I do think was using this for a planter. We can't really see the mark on the bottom because it's so dirty and the glaze is pretty heavy, but um, it is Stanford Ware. And it's a nice little, probably the 1940s and 50s, and I think it would look nice in a kitchen as a planter or really anywhere you'd like to use it. Here's an abstract mid-century ashtray heavy enamel over metal over copper I guess and it's let's see this is made in Connecticut somewhere Bravo where I don't remember what it says Bo um, Buvano from Cheshire Connecticut uh, so the mid-century folks enjoy that kind of thing 
And I don't buy a lot of EAPG, Early American Pressed Glass or Pattern Glass, because there's so much of it. But when I find a somewhat unusual piece, I'll buy it. Now this won't be considered rare, but most of these pitchers, as you know, have lids of some kind. Either they'll be silver or silver plate or sometimes uh, brass. I rarely find or see these tall pitchers like this for syrup or jugs without any kind of a lid and so I like that. It is made in a three-part mold. We see three seam lines on the base. Those are not cracks. You see the seam lines? One, two, three. And then the handle is blown and applied. So that's what's called an applied handle. It's in really nice condition. It'll date probably to the 1880s or 1890s. And it's just a very nice example. It has no damage at all. Uh, I like it a lot. Look at these back here. You get 10 cups of soup. Wonderful. We have two handles on each side, so they're small, either restaurant wear uh, cups of soup. But Syracuse, China also made this for railroads and hotels and utilitarian, I'm sorry, for commercial use. Barb, if you're watching, you are the restaurant gal. I didn't, I, there's a way to look up the dates. I can't read it. It's too smudged, so I don't know exactly where these date, but you can go to a website and find out the age of Syracuse, China based on the back stamp. It's just that I can't quite make out those numbers at the top. So Barb, maybe you know when these are made. They're probably not that old, but they're, well, probably 40 years old. But they're in really great shape. There are 10 of these soup bowls, little soup bowls in beautiful cobalt blue with a nice gold accent around the rim. And there, there are no chips in any of them. They're super clean. We see five on top and then there, there are five uh, beneath them. So those are very nice. And... Uh, Okay, you can see a little bit better now. Two lotus plates made by Anchor Hawking. That's Vitrock. It's the type of uh, glass that they talk called Vitrock. And there's one in yellow and there's one in green. Sometimes they uh, there's white in the center and they just fade out into the green color. And that's just the way it was made. So they're, they're pastels. These originally had little lotus leaf... Uh, cups that sat right in the middle of them for cottage cheese or berries or whatever dessert. But you could take them off and just use these as plates. They also come in pink and blue and people collect these. They're beautiful at Easter time. And I had my little Asian figurines sitting in these lotus leaves that seemed appropriate. Turn the light. That is a bright light. We don't quite need all of that. But let's go down here and look at these funny little guys. Um, this is quite a collection I have here. Now I'll tell you, um, can you see them that way? I think you can see them better that way. I'm selling all six of these together. They're all musicians and everybody here is made in Japan. Now three of them are occupied Japan and three are not. So we can obviously date the occupied Japan figurines. I think you're all familiar with the dates of occupied Japan just after the Second World War into the early 50s and then the others are going to date just after that. So here's one that's simply marked Japan, Japan and uh, there's one that's difficult to see but it is stamped occupied Japan on the bottom. So there are six of these musicians We've got some type of a horn right there. Not quite sure. That does not quite look like a clarinet. She's playing her um, violin for the little Scotty. That little fellow over that right there that's kind of odd looking is playing a violin. We have a guitar, a saxophone, and this little boy playing for a chicken. I guess he's got a clarinet or some type of a little horn in his hand there. And these are all really cute. So they're all going together. 
The two Asian figurines back here don't match, but I'm placing them together anyway. Okay, he, she's a little bit taller than he is. She looks like she's in a bad mood. And uh, so there they are. I'll put those back on their lotus leaf plates. They're kind of cute back there. Here's an adorable little Dutch couple. They, again, are not a matching pair, but I'm placing them together because they go so well. He is uh, made in Japan, and so is she. Now, she is, or was anyway, a bell. Her clapper is gone. I guess that's what you call it. Those are the holes right there where the string went through, and she's got a crack up the back of her skirt. Uh, can you see that? Now it's, uh, well, there it is. Can't do anything about it. But, of course, she was a bell, and she's still cute just sitting there like that. Turn this light back on. Now, this poor thing has lost some of her skirt, obviously. Now, my suggestion for this lady here is that she get herself a longer skirt. The poor thing has seen better days, and we'll zoom in here. This is one of these sort of porcelain lace skirts that sort of deteriorates sometime with age. And so, obviously, we hope she had a longer skirt at one point. Uh, but she is ready to go, and uh, she's Japan, and I'm selling her all by herself. Won't someone give her a new home? You better put some clothes on, sweetie. It's going to get cold this weekend. Now, these three over here are bizarre. We've got Hitler on the accordion, Peter Lorre on the euphonium, and I don't know who that is, maybe Don Knotts on the end, also playing something that looks like a euphonium. Not quite a tuba, uh, but a loose interpretation of a euphonium, I would say. Well, I'm just kidding. He's obviously not Hitler, nor is that Peter Lorre. They're all playing instruments, and they're also made in Japan. Um, some of these made in Japan pieces are rather strange, but... You know, I like this little group of, of musicians here. I hope somebody will give them a new home. Well, I'm going to stand back up. I think I have shown you everything in this weird, no theme thrift haul. I did manage to get some South Jersey apples, which I'm going to be making actually baked apples in this wonderful baking dish. So there they are. These are local South Jersey apples. Came from a local orchard. And you saw me thrift this wonderful baking dish a while ago. I think I showed that to you uh, two or three videos back. But the apples are all ready. I'll probably be working on that later this week because we're going to have a cold snap over the weekend. Well, my coffee might be just warm enough now to drink and the toast is, and the toast is waiting for me. And, once again, don't forget, in the comments below, let me know if you know who designed this toaster, what year it was manufactured, and for what special event. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's it. Well, it's all for sale in the old curiosity shop, except my toaster and apples back there. But everything else can be yours. It's all listed. The link is in the description box below. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. I just said that. And so long for now.